everyone, this is FaZe and welcome to my channel. If you've been subscribed to me for a while, then you probably know how big of a fan I am of the iPad. And you know, that actually started with this all new M4 iPad Pro. Because before I started using the M4 iPad Pro, I primarily used the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M3 chip. So basically all my computing was done on the MacBook. Now I did have an iPad, I had the iPad mini. And I basically used that for all leisure tasks, things like reading books, catching up on the news and social media, and basically just consuming content. In fact, I did a video on the iPad mini and called it the best content consumption device because I felt like anything bigger than the iPad mini was kind of unnecessary for the tasks that you would want to do it while you're just laying on the couch or traveling somewhere. But boy, was I wrong because when I got the all new M4 iPad Pro, I tried replacing it with my MacBook and I thought that would be nearly impossible. In fact, I think a lot of people believe that you cannot replace the iPad with your computer. And I was so, so wrong because yes, this can replace the MacBook for many, many people. Not everyone, but many people. But anyways, this is not what this video is about. This is not about why this is a Mac replacement because I've already done that video and you can check that out by clicking the link above or in the description below. Today, I'm gonna to talk about why I love this iPad Pro, specifically the 13 inch model and not the 11 inch because technically I've used both. And there's a reason why I ended up getting the 13 inch iPad Pro as my main machine. But anyways, let's start off by talking about the first thing that I really love about this all new M4 iPad Pro is its tandem OLED display. This display is absolutely stunning. I mean, it's one of those things that you actually have to go to the Apple store and really check it out and use to see how amazing it is. The colors really pop, everything's so vibrant and everything looks so crisp and clean. Now, I'm not saying that the mini LED iPad Pro that came before this was any slouch. That also has an amazing display and I think a lot of people may not even find a difference between the two. At first, I didn't find a difference either. I looked at the OLED display and I was like, sure, it's a lot brighter at 1000 nits of max brightness. But at the same time, when I compared them side by side, I didn't find a huge difference, but I was wrong because as I used this iPad Pro more and more, and when I went back to the mini LED display, I didn't find it to be as vibrant and colorful as this. But it's one of those things you have to use for a certain period of time to really understand. Because I remember back in the day when Apple first introduced the 120 hertz ProMotion display on the iPad Pro. And when I got that iPad Pro, I didn't find a huge difference. Like, yeah, it felt a little speedier when I would, you know, flip the pages of a book or just the home screen in general. But I didn't feel like it was going to be a big game changer that Apple was really marketing it as. And when I used that iPad Pro more and more, and when I compared it to a previous generation iPad Pro, I felt like the previous generation iPad Pro was a lot slower and it just was lagging, but it really wasn't because I was just so used to the promotion display that going back to anything else feels outdated. And, and the same thing goes with the iPad Pro. It has the promotion display. So when I use the iPad Air, I feel like it's a slow device just because it's not tracking my movements as fast as the 120 Hertz display that you get on the iPad Pro. So just like that, once you get so used to this tandem OLED display and you get really used to watching movies and consuming a lot of content on this, when you go back to something else, it's not that that other previous generation device is bad. It's just this is infinitely better. And when you're spending so much time not just consuming content or creating content, that display makes a huge difference. So that is the first thing that I really love about this all new iPad Pro. Now, the second thing that I really like about this iPad Pro, which I actually thought I wouldn't really care too much about, is how thin and light it is. Because when Apple introduced this iPad Pro, and when they said that this is the thinnest device that they've ever done, I was like, who's asking for this? Really, who's asking for a thinner and lighter iPad? Is this something we really need? Yes, I think it actually is something we need, and it makes a big difference. And the reason why it makes such a big difference is because the iPad is all known for portability, right? It's one of those devices that is meant for you to hold and manipulate with the touch of your fingers. And now more than ever before, you can actually hold this with just one hand. Before it was a little cumbersome, but because of how light this is, it's much easier to hold. And also when you want to use the iPad Pro without its magic keyboard and just want to take notes and stuff like that, it's far better in the hand. So I definitely feel like that thinness and lightness makes a difference and especially makes a difference when you package it up with the Magic Keyboard, because even the Magic Keyboard has become a lot lighter. And it makes a difference because, you know, when you're holding this and you're taking this around, 
this whole package feels a lot smaller. So yeah, you have a 13 inch machine right in here, but because it's thinner and lighter, it makes a difference. It makes it more portable and it's much easier to you know maneuver around wherever you go. So the thinness and lightness makes a difference, especially when you have it on the Magic Keyboard. Now, speaking of the Magic Keyboard, that is actually the third thing that I really enjoy about this iPad Pro. Now, at first glance, it looks pretty much the same, but they've done a few minor things that makes it much, much better. Obviously, like I said, it is lighter and it's a thinner package overall, but they've added a few things that makes it very nice. So the first thing they've done is that they've made the surface aluminum. So this gives it a very premium feel because I'm not a big fan of this rubber material. I kind of wish that even the outside of this was something different, something a little more durable rather than this rubbery material that gets all sorts of fingerprints and smudges. Um, and I don't think it wears very well over time, but I'm glad that they added this aluminum surface because I think it looks really, really nice. It gives it more of a MacBook look and feel. So that's one thing they did, but there's two other things that they added. First is a entire function row on your keyboard, finally. I don't know what took Apple so long to include this because before if I wanted to adjust my music or adjust the brightness of the display or, or turn on Siri or just search something really quickly, I would have to physically go into Control Center and do all of those things, right? Now I don't have to do that anymore because finally the function row keys are there. The third thing that I really like about this is the fact that you get this really nice glass trackpad that is larger than ever before and it now has haptic feedback. So it's really nice because when you're using this iPad Pro as a, as a computer, using these multitasking gestures and stuff, it makes a big difference. And if you're a video editor like me, or you're editing pictures and you really wanna zoom in and stuff, it's far better to work with this larger canvas. So that's really, really nice. And the haptic feedback makes it feel as if it's the same trackpad that you find on MacBook. So that is a very nice added touch. And the next thing I want to talk about is reading on this iPad Pro. Now, I always thought the iPad mini was a great e-reader because of its form factor and just how small it is, right? And because this is a 13-inch device, I never thought I could read books on it. And to be honest, I've had a 13-inch iPad Pro in the past, and I never was reading books on it. But with this, I actually enjoyed because like I said, it's so much thinner and lighter. It's not so cumbersome to hold, right? But because it's an OLED display, you also get deeper blacks, right? And a lot of the times the pixels are actually turned off when the background is black. So what I do, and I've done a whole video on this, is I basically turn the background of my screen black and it's just the white text. So that makes it much, much easier to read. And I feel like it's easier on the eye, especially when you have features like night shift and true tone, it's much easier to read on this device. And because it's a 13 inch model, you can actually use it in horizontal mode and have the two page layout. You can have the two page layout on the 11 inch as well, but I feel like it makes much more sense because when you have it in landscape mode, it's almost like you have two pages, two actual pages side by side. It doesn't feel cramped in one screen. Now, speaking of screen and the screen size, the reason why I'm keeping the 13 inch is because I use this primarily as a computer and it makes a huge difference when I'm multitasking and I have multiple apps side by side. It just makes a huge difference because everything is bigger and brighter thanks to this new display. And I feel like you can just have more screen real estate to work with. And to me, that makes a big difference because sometimes I'll be editing a video and on the side, I'll have notes for things that I wanna include in the video. And once again, you can do that on the 11 inch, but because of this form factor, it makes a big difference just because you have more space to work with. And also a lot of people might like the 11 inch because they think it's very portable. But like I said, this is actually thinner than the 11 inch iPad Pro and it's relatively light. It's actually very, very light. So when you look at it from a portability factor, it's not like a 14 inch MacBook that can easily fit into your backpack and the 16 inch can't, right? This can easily fit into your backpack. After all, it is a 13 inch device. It's not massive by any means. And if you get the Magic Keyboard, I really like it because you get a larger trackpad and I don't know if the keys are larger, but they're nicely spaced out. And that makes a big difference when it comes to your typing experience. So I feel like everything's just better with that 13 inch display. Everything's bigger. It's great for multitasking. And if you consume a lot of media, like watching YouTube videos or Netflix or reading books, the larger display really comes handy. But at the end of the day, these are just my reasons for loving this iPad Pro with the M4 chip and the 13 inch display. And as always, I wanna know your thoughts. What do you think about this new M4 iPad Pro? And which screen size do you prefer? Do you prefer the 11 inch or do you prefer the 13 inch? 
Whatever your answers are, whatever your thoughts are, leave them down in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel where you're gonna see a lot more content about iPads, how it improves my productivity and workflow. And my new podcast show has finally dropped and it's called Creators Today. And Creators Today is all about content creators coming together, sharing their journeys, what their productivity is like, and what tech they use to improve their workflow. So if that is appealing to you, then stay tuned every week for a new episode that will launch. We just started last week and the first episode came out and it was about iPad versus Mac. So if that's a topic that you're interested in, then be sure to check that out by clicking the link or in the description below. Episode two comes out in just a few days, so stay tuned for that as well. And as always, I really enjoy talking to you guys about the all new M4 iPad Pro. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.